top 10 changes in the Tower of God anime by Mr. Dr. Bonehead. I've never seen his videos, but preemptive. Sharing the link, go like his video and sub to the channel if you haven't. If you enjoy his content, let's check it out though. Hold up one second. One second. Technical issues and we're back. Guys, it is time to talk about the top 10 biggest changes or biggest differences that the Tower of God anime made from the original. This is just my This is the Persona theme, right? I, 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 I swear every, per, like, a lot of people use this Persona soundtrack BGM when they're just doing commentary. Opinion, and not all these changes are bad. So this guy is the Tower of God guy? Really? Oh. So you're telling me if I go to this channel right now, it's just gonna be mountains of Tower of God content we can farm? He's a reaction channel! But it's like a Tower of God only channel. Interesting. In interesting. Anyways, anyways, let's let's go back to the video. Some of these are actually some good changes, but these are what I think are the biggest overall changes that I noticed from the anime. If there are Season some differences one. that I didn't name in this video, which I'm sure there are plenty, let me know in the comments down below because if you want it, I might make another video on this topic. Also, be sure to watch this video until the end because as we continue on the list, mm -hmm. uh, the number one spot and the two spot, they are the ones that make the biggest difference, in my opinion, to the overall story and the characters. So if you watch to the end, you'll see the biggest changes yes, that the sir. anime made. Number 10. Chunwa and Kancho. Anime onlys might not. Who is Chunwa and Kancho? Already don't even know. Know this, but the anime no. staff and team actually made some changes to who passes the position test and who ends up making it past the second floor. Okay. And one of those characters is Shunwa, the guy who fights in Dorsey during the high. Oh, the knight, right. This is the royal guard of that princess who is actually kind of useful because she has anima powers, but this guy kind of just got. Just got dunked on by Endorsed and she took his ignition weapon. Now I think he's just dead. What happened to him? In Seek Test, he has this really cool looking ignition weapon called an Armada. Yeah, and Armada. in the webtoon, he makes it to the end. He's really good friends. Really? He makes it to the Why did they just trash him? I guess in season two and beyond, he doesn't get much screen time, so he's just gone. But so in season one, it's like it doesn't really matter whether or not this guy passes. So fuck him, I guess. He's like a partner to Nare, and both him and Nare continue on up the tower, and even though- Yeah, Nare or that girl, that's the anima girl we're talking about, right? The princess? No, we don't see them again in the webcomic. Uh, it's assumed that they either left the group or failed later on. Oh, we don't even see that girl either. So, like, she was pretty useful, though. No, 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 she, she was useful. Blue Turtle uh, had a lot of help using her anima powers during the last test. Yeah, but, like, damn, those two characters, the knight and the- the the princess not a zahad princess but like a just royal princess i think it just doesn't matter okay but it's interesting because Concho is used to replace shanwa in the anime he's this guy he, uh, was he from our bag i forget but like he was quite relevant i saw him a lot of times uh, quite a, sometimes i'd like mistaken for huts the guy with how do, how do I explain Concho? Uh, the guy who had knocked beats up in the crown game, that guy. In the yeah, original, Concho fails the position test. You, you see him a little bit after the crown game. He plays a minor role in the hide and seek test, and then he's never seen again. He fails, and that's it. What's interesting about cutting Shunwa is that his family, the Hong family, plays a minor role in Tower of God later on, and there's some Hong family? Is, is it like one of the 10 great clans or something? Backstory involving that family and another character from that family shows up later on. Oh. So it's interesting that Shanwa isn't included because some of us assumed that maybe Shanwa would return in the future in the webcomic. But this, the way the anime handled it, means he's just never coming back. And I don't know. That's a little sad. Salute. Well, with like such a diverse cast of characters in Tower of God, it's going to be inevitable, inevitable that like some characters you just... You know, you can't develop them over and over, right? Like, I think Serena is a perfect character. Here's why. Perfect, uh, perfect, like, side character. Where it's like, yes, she is not, like, a crazy character that's popping off, right? But she has her duty, she serves it, and then she has a whole character closure arc. And it even, like, goes to, like, portray, like, a good theme of the, of the world. Just, like, you know, how she's talentless, but she tried her best, and sometimes you gotta know when to throw in the towel. And then she leaves the tower. 
And it's just like, oh, you know, that's the story of Serena. I think that she portrayed the story of the average person and she left. And it's just like book close. But some of these other characters are just like, yeah, we're just going to forget about them silently and just act like they never existed. Bad, but it is a change nonetheless. Number nine, Leiro Ro and Quant. Okay. The anime handled Leiro Ro and Quant pretty well over the course of the anime. But the end of their characters, the end of season one, when it pertains to these two characters, what were they doing at the end of season one? Leroro wanted to go figure out the truth, right? And he made Quant go with him. And he, Quant was like, what? What are you talking about? Secret truth of the fucking test? He had no clue. That's what was happening in season one. Characters is definitely different. In the original, Leroro quits, just like in the anime. But then after Quant complains to Hansung about Leroro quitting, yeah. Hansung actually fires Quant and... <laughs> Leroro quits. Quant's like, what? You just gonna leave and leave? All right. You gone too. Goodbye. It tells him to go after Leroro because they're a pair or a partner. <laughs> they call him damn espresso machine. I got fired because of you. <laughs> now what are they doing? Trying to get different jobs? Right. And there's this funny joke about the hamburger and the Coke and that Leroro is like the hamburger to Quant's Coke. They're partners. <laughs> they can't be separated. Okay. It's a funny thing. And then Quant ends up chasing Leroro. Art by Tan no Miho. Okay, it's a fan art. Leroro hamburger, Quant Coke, okay. Roro, and it's this funny conversation where Quant is kind of like a sundere, like he, he, he's not admitting that he Ah, my favorite type of girls in anime tropes, the sundere. No, 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 sorry. You're supposed to pronounce it sundeer, actually. He wants to go with Ro, but he basically does after all. And it's charming, right? And it, 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 I think it stays true to Quant's character, right? He's kind of uh, a goofy guy who's kind of yeah. volatile and crazy. And uh, I, I really like it because it shows how much Quant cares about Ro. I wonder if we're going to see them in season two. Maybe they're just forgotten, too. They're just goodbye, never seen again. But in the anime, after Leroy Ro quits, he basically asks Quant to go with him, and he doesn't really want to leave Quant there with Han Sung, which in itself is kind of cool, right? Leroy Ro's looking Cares out about for him. Quant. Yeah. But it's funny because it's totally different than in the webcomic where Ro is like, don't follow me. You know, Leroy Ro's kind of like a lone wolf more so in the webcomic, but Quant tags along. So it's definitely a difference, and I don't think one is necessarily better than the other, but I thought I'd point it out nonetheless. Both are funny. I think both are funny. In in the webtoon, I guess that makes, you know, Leroro look a little bit more nice towards Quant, but in the webtoon, it's just being more sundere, and, you know, it's just like, oh, you're tagging with me, Quant, you got fired? All right, let's go. Number eight, Levin. If you guys Levin? know who Levin is, he is the gun guy who is shooting people. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember this, y'all. You guys told me it, because, like, um, he, in the webtoon, wait, sorry, in the anime, Sorry, did I also, before, I'm getting the webtoon and the anime mixed up. It, it, I, I should have said Leroro in the anime, you know, he, he quit and then Quant followed, but in the webtoon he got fired. But I heard this guy was the guy that got dunked on by Leroro, right? Yeah, because like it was the Shinsu test and he got mad and it's like, here's a bit of Shinsu, can you tolerate this? People during the 400 to 200 regulars test, the very first test on the second floor, he's the one, you know, Rack bends his gun. And in the anime, he ends up showing up and you see him fail Leroro's Shinsu test. Leroro sort of uses him as an example because he's complaining mm -hmm. and he fails right then and there. But what you anime onlys might not know is that Levin actually passes that Shinsu test. What? He passes the crown game. Like he, what? he makes it all the way through the crown game, through the positions test and through the last examination. Wow. She he made it to the end, but he got done so dirty in the webtoon. So Levin is actually a in the anime, I keep getting it mixed up. He got done dirty in the anime. Part of the main squad who makes it past the second floor, like Shunwa, he's very- That's fucked up, he made it to- He going up! Cause he doesn't matter. Another character, or the significance of that person doesn't matter, so they can just decide to just make him quit. Just n not quit, make him fail, because he couldn't pass Leroro's you know, Shinsu test. Similar to Shunwa, However, the reason why he's higher up on the list is because he fails way sooner than Shunwa yeah. does. In fact, in the original, he, he only plays a minor role, but he does play a role in the crown game. He tries to sh You know what? I think Leroro making an example out of him was like a very chilling moment of what Shinsu is and just simply like, you are either given this God-given talent or you're not, right? Chance, RNG, and you just don't have it, kid. That was a very compelling moment early on in the season of anime. And I think... His character did more for the anime by having that moment 
compared to a scenario where he just was in the background and made it till the end and just passed, right? So I think that dunking on him earlier on made for greater moments. I, I, I totally agree with this, yeah shoot bomb and the black march stops the bullet or that's what we assume happened uh he plays a minor role in the hide and seek test and he's one of the two light bears that passes light bear. uh, alongside coon right and in the anime they make it sound like rachel passed yeah but then didn't pass because she's injured so but only she one passed. light bear passes it's a little weird that's right weird. um and he's another character good oh my god yeah i love this too based based i love this guy already bro yeah, shoot that, shoot that, shoot her, <laughs> based. We have a fellow Rachel hater. Okay, let's go. Who we assume must have failed because we never see him again in the web uh -huh. comic, or maybe he'll show up later. But he, he probably just failed. Uh, but it's interesting, you know. He, he was cut massive. His role was massively cut in the anime, and I was a little saddened by it because uh, our our dub. If you don't know, we have a, a dub here on the channel of the original web comic. It's going on. What? They're making Taro got a bridge. Well, the bridge is like a sarcastic, you know, adaptation where you dub the voice and make a joke out of it. But like, is he doing a serious dub? What? For three years, and Captain Eagle's portrayal of Levin is fantastic, and it's made me love Levin so much. Okay. <laughs> abridged, abridged. Another one. So rest in peace, Levin. That's pretty good. I, I, if I look at Levin's character, yeah, he, he seems a little slimy. The, the whole voice acting, that was pretty good. So rest in peace, Levin. You will be missed. At least anime Levin, you will be okay. missed. Number seven, Serena. Serena oh. is one of my favorite characters from season one. I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but like, she's not my favorite character, one of my favorites, but I can understand and respect like what kind of character she is. Like, like, like again, she was not a side character that just got, you know, thrown off and never seen again. She had her own way out. She intentionally left the test after having a book closed on her whole character arc to portray the average person versus the talented. One, she's such a realistic portrayal she of what is. it's like to be in the tower. I think that she, like, let's get real. You think you and me, we're going to fucking pass this test? No, we're probably going to be a Serena, right? Everyone can relate to her, the shortcomings and, you know, realizing that everyone around you is so talented and gifted and here you are just stagnating and wondering what would have happened if you, you know, tried, you know, studying or, you know, working harder, younger at life with all these different kids around you, right? I, I think Serena is such a great depiction that, you know, you're showing that aspect that everybody can relate to. And she's not someone who's very strong. She's pretty much a normal person. She's somewhat skilled at being like a thief or a dagger. She even says her real, only real skill is like running away, right? And she has this whole backstory that she tells to Ho. Her character it's, is really impactful. She, she represents it what it means to like, she, she's basically what Ho could have been. You know, Ho. Two sides of the same coin, right? Ho was like also untalented, but instead he decided to lash out and take other people down with them. Serena is the other side where she is also untalented, but then realizes her shortfallings and decides to distance herself away and, you know, live a different life. Ho and her are both weak. They didn't really have what it took to be in the tower. Ho made the wrong choices, though, and Serena made the right choices. She chose to leave of her own volition. And this is why I like the anime. The anime had her choose to leave mm. and they gave her a goodbye scene with shibisu and she even gave him her dagger i really like that scene. that was a great scene because like shibisu and serena we were joking about they could be just like the the jobber couple because they just seem so just you know plain right and man at the end when shibisu was there as serena's leaving with their suitcase damn that was actually such a good scene and then the transfer of the knife hope the knife comes to good use later scene in the web comic she has that conversation with ho she talks to Ho while in Dorsey's fighting Quant, and then she fails, and they have a drinking party, and she kind of smiles, and then you never see her again. It's assumed that she just failed, and then you never see her again. I like that the anime actually addressed it out. her leaving, right? She's yeah, that's way better. I guess in the webtoon during that moment, I guess SIU didn't really have an understanding of how they wanted to like portray this character. So it's like, yeah, all right, she's gone now. Bye. But then it's like, all right, now we're doing the anime adaptation. Let's give her a more of a... Like, more of a scene, more of a reason, flesh her out why she left and, you know, conclude her character. I think Serena, again, one of the best supporting characters in season one. She's not a major character, but she was a part of the squad. And I really like how they, they just, everything about her character was really well handled in the anime. Agreed. Especially her goodbye scene with Shibisu. I thought that was really well done. And 
uh, Shibisu, you know, saying, let's go, Serena, and he pulls out the dagger against the bull. Really well handled. I really like this change uh, in the anime. Number six, bananas. Us what? webcomic readers and anime watchers love Rack because... Bananas. Banana Milk was shown a little bit earlier. Because he's such a lovable guy. He's a crocodile who's a spear bear. He's kind yeah. of a sundere in his own right. Uh, but if you didn't know, his chocolate obsession in the anime is, is actually more of a banana obsession in the What? Why did they decide to give him a bunch of Snickers? Instead, you know, Blue Turtle could have been popping up bananas. Webcomic. He's always talking about eating bananas. You sometimes see him eating bananas That's in the background. Uh, at one point, he's talking about pulling off uh, someone's banana. Uh what do you mean? My prey isn't going up the tower because of a female turtle? We're talking about Black Turtle and Rachel. Is it his mating scene? <laughs> Bring him here, I'll pause. <laughs> what are you? Why, why are you pulling out his... Are you trying to replace... I mean... I mean... <laughs> Uh, so, you know, there's that. But what's interesting is even though he has a chocolate obsession in the anime, there is still a reference to uh, his love for bananas when he orders a banana black in episode uh, three. And I really like this yeah, this because one, this it still one. hints at his love for bananas in the original. And it's kind of like a classic thing with Rack. It's kind of become a running joke in the community, bananas and Rack and everything. So I do like that banana black exists. Okay. Speaking of banana black, it's time to cut to a commercial break. Oh, ad time? Introducing. Oh, we're good. okay. You know what? He's actually putting an effort for this ad. Let's watch this. Banana Black, the all new delicious, delectable, <laughs> and delight. It's not even an ad. It, it's, he just paper wrapped this around the bottle. <laughs> he just, he's just doing it for fun. That will surely help carry you up the tower. Oh, look at that Chef Control! It's got the all the taste and the texture that you could ever want. Wow. Go watch Chef PK's video and try all it right. out for yourself. Okay. This is totally the same product. Oh yeah, now, for sure it is. Back to the video. Okay, we're back. Nice commercial ad. That was probably the weirdest thing I've ever done on this channel. <laughs> and I bet a lot of people appreciate that because moments like this kind of like brings different sides of the content creator's personality to light to an audience that may have not known and kind of makes them feel like they know him more, you know? So like this ad placement there, that was great. If you're wondering what that was all about, this video was actually a suggestion from one of my $20 patrons, Smap the Slayer Ooh. Anime. Thank you so much, Smap the Slayer Anime, for suggesting. $20 patron, god damn! This video, sponsoring this video, and his condition was to include some kind of Banana Black sponsorship slash commercial, so there you go. I'm never gonna leave that down. That That's gonna haunt this channel for years. And that's by the pretty way, good. if you don't know what SMAP is, I recommend joining the Discord because it is More quite ad. interesting, to say the least. But Smap. back to the list, number five is the Black March. Okay. The Black March is a mysterious weapon, right? She's one of the 13 months. I hear she never came out. I heard that like, no, 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 uh, uh, in the crown game, she never came out to do that stuff, right? Yeah, I, I think that's what Annie New said. I really like how the anime portrayed her as this sort of mature figure. I always assumed yeah. she was a bit more of an innocent sort of uh, tricksy little girl. Nah, she's like a mommy type, man. She hates girls. She only, you know, says, you're not a cute guy. Get out of my face. Not activating for you. Girl, but, or like not a little girl, but a younger woman. Uh, but I do like the mature take that the anime mm. took on her character. But that's not the difference I'm talking about. The anime added a lot of new scenes involving the Black March, at least Great. two significant. I mean, why wouldn't you, right? I'm sure, like, in the beginning, I bet, like, the popularity for, like, who the best girl was, like, between Yuri Zahad and Black March, right? Because what else is really the competition in the early game? Like, no one's gonna vote for Rachel, right? And Dorsey shows up later, so, like, Black March is probably, like, top one waifu in the beginning for a lot of people, Tower of God. Ones. The first is after Bomb passes the test on the first floor, and the Black March is sort of, like, holding Bomb as yeah. they pass and make their- Dude, this look, as she, like, the way that she hugs him while staring down Yuri is such a flex, it's like, it's my boy. You think this is yours? Nah, this is mine. Way to the second floor in, like, this rainbow sort of style, and she talks about how he's basically, the next time he meets Rachel, it'll, it'll have been, like, a long time or they will have lived a long time without seeing each other and 
they sort of call back to this scene after Rachel betrays Bao and everything happens. Um, it still doesn't really make sense to me, but there is that scene, okay. you know, interesting. But then at the end of the crown game, yeah. there's this new scene and everything is anime only here, right? Changed here because after Bomb protects Rachel from Huariyun, Bomb in the anime gets up and is about to finish off Huariyun, yeah. which is pretty dark Bomb. But then the Black March pauses time, stops him, and then like just makes him pass out, right? The kiss How? of sleep or whatever. Who knows? Uh, none of that happens in the webcomic. This is And I love that they did this. This is well, let's see what was different. Like let's see how they handled the webtoon. Cause like that the way that Black Mars came out again and just that bomb, I think was a great touch. It's like, oh yeah, it's her again from episode one, right? Or else you're just gonna never see her again. It's entirely new stuff. I think what maybe what the anime staff wanted to do was Kumbait. They want to flex their number one rated waifu. To make the Black March seem like more of a a figure who plays a role in Bomb's growth in, in the story instead of in the webcomic where she sort of appears and then doesn't appear again for a really long time and she's Aww. just in weapon form, right? That's the only thing I can think of, but it... I'm like, we're not going to get her again. Now, because like right now, Yuri has, you know, Black March and Green April. We just got robbed of this. <laughs> Anak, Anak is really nerfed right now, huh? Wonder how Anak's gonna be fighting without her black, uh, sorry, Green April. Maybe she's not reliant on it as I think that she is. But like, imagine in season two, bum with Black Mart, with this new, you know, Shinsu abilities, you know, training with Fug. Damn, that'd be crazy. It is a massive change. I think all of us uh, webcomic readers were very surprised to see this. So I thought I'd point it out and I, I don't mind it. I think it's kind of interesting, but it is a gigantic change nonetheless. Number four, Blueberry. Blueberry what? is the member of the Kuhn family that Kuhn speaks to in his lighthouse. He has a real name, but- Oh, this guy, uh, this dude was part of Yuri's gang, right? That was on the Nintendo DS, he's just gamer. The anime did not reveal it, so I'm- there's a lot of gamers now that I think about it. Masheni, the other... No, no, not Masheni. She's the other um, Blue Turtle family. Uh, there was a pinker girl, Rot Rote something? Rote or Chicken? No. There was, there was that girl, the pinker girl, who's also a gamer. Well, remember the one that's controlling a shitload of lighthouses? I'm not going to say it here. And he's an interesting character. He mentions that he's Repalista. an outcast as well. Too many names. But the biggest change revolves around his conversation with Kuhn. In the anime, he talks to Kuhn about... I really hope this video doesn't get limited ads and have to send for appeal because he's the one saying that name. Because, like, I will never say that last name again. I'm just going to say Blue Turtle. Maria. And it seems like somehow everyone in the tower knows about Kuna and Maria and, and Blueberry is one of them, right? He talks about their this whole their whole relationship and how he can apparently take Kuhn to see Maria mm. and his explanation is that he just wants to mess up the Kuhn family it's kind of a weird scene not gonna lie it seems kind of out of place and I think what the anime production team and every everyone wanted to do was make Kuhn's backstory come full circle in season one but I still don't really like this change in the webcomic Blueberry mm. enters Kuhn's lighthouse because he wants to find his teammates and at first he doesn't even realize that Kuhn is his brother like, and I, I like this really? a lot because Blueberry is a ranker, right? Like, who cares about these regulars? He's just coming in, he wants to find Yuri and his other teammates, so he comes in, he borrows Kuhn's lighthouse, but then once Kuhn talks to him and asks if he's a son of Kuhn, then they have this conversation about family, and he's like, oh, you're my brother. And I really like this, you know? It's kind of like this interesting scene between brothers that isn't necessarily, it doesn't make Kuhn feel more important than he should. And I think this is really important because then they have the webtoon frame here looked like he's being like a big bro, like a good big bro, you know, giving advice and tips. And I think this is really important because then they have a conversation about how Kuhn wants to be, you know, I'm Kuhn. I'm going to use this name to rule the tower one day. And it's like, whoa, that's so cool. And then Blueberry says, I'm looking forward to seeing that, my brother, you know. Really? But first, rule your lighthouse. Like, it's this funny scene where Kuhn isn't really anybody right now. He's just a regular, right? But his ambitions are big. But in the anime, they make Kuhn seem really important. And I don't know. It's it's just strange. Like, everyone knows about Kuhn and Blueberry. It's almost like Blueberry. I thought it was just because the family name of Blue Turtles was so significant to Tower. That's why they, everybody knew about it. But, huh. Well, I'm sure he's going to get more important later on in the webtoon, right? And maybe the anime already knowing that was like, let's just make him already important. Where he came to talk to Kuhn, but I like how in the original, he doesn't even really care about Kuhn at first. He's just kind of doing his own thing. It's more true to his character. And that's another change that I didn't, okay. I didn't really like this change, but it is a big change nonetheless. Number three, in Dorsey. I okay, made a whole video about this topic, so if you want... There's a whole separate video about Endorsey. We might have to watch that. If you want to watch that video, you can click the card here.
I'm clicking it. Let's see where it leads us to. Let's let's see where it leads us to. Uh, uh, the anime ruined Bauman and oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. More, Endorsey. more dra drama. Yes, we can farm this. Yes, we will farm this later. Good. That's 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 a later video though. That's a later video. Get back to the this one. It's much more in depth than what I'm gonna say. But basically, when Endorsey's about to kill a knock, when mm. Ryan is basically forcing her to. She is about to do it, but then she tells Anak, let's eat together. They boom, they attack Ren, and, and that's it in the yeah, anime. But in power. the original webcomic, before Endorsey is about to kill Anak, she has this flashback to her, uh, a scene that she had with Bomb, a conversation she had with Bomb when they're around the dinner table about eating good food if you're only the strongest training together which is another thing they cut there's a lot that they cut with training scenes. And bomb, but this is the big one and bomb talks to her about loneliness and this conversation but does not mean you're lonely what is that how you feel with me no no never when i'm with you oh. <laughs> and it, it, it bomb never for a second in the anime I, I felt like he never was romantically interested in Endorsey. Never. And Dorsey was pretty interested in Bomb, I think. And like people even talk about how Bomb like rejected her. No, no. There was like the 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 two people that was fighting in Dorsey during the tag contest, which was actually one of the knights as well. Remember the knight that didn't matter? He also with the friend also said, Wow, she just got rejected when Bomb said no to Endorsey and you know wanted to chase after Rachel. Is it's implied that this is what convinces Endorsey to climb the tower with a knock. She doesn't want to kill a knock. She realizes that these people are important to her. And so Bomb saying like, "Aren't you lonely?" That re realization is what really spurs Endorsey to love Anak like a sister. And she basically says, "Screw everything else," right? And that this scene is so huge because it basically the way the anime handles it it almost ruins her character huh. right because her character goes full circle she goes from being this bloodthirsty or merciless killer right yeah. she'll do whatever it takes to climb to being somebody who actually does Empathetic. something for others she does something that doesn't benefit herself she saves anok's life and puts her title and her life in jeopardy and i really love that but her just doing it in the anime just because instead of having this motivation mm. because of her conversation then the anime gave in Serena more a delicate touch than Endorsey, huh? Because like the anime gave Serena all she needed and had a book closed and sent her off, but Endorsey just feels like they just skipped all the important shit to flesh her out, and instead they're like, look at Endorsey's heels. You guys like her heels? More heels here. With bomb. I don't know. It's a there was the other thing with the heels too. Remember? And then you said there was a moment of realization and maturation as Endorsey realizes that you know what? I don't need these heels. I'm gonna wear regular shoes. And it was like a symbolic movement. It's like a, it's not a huge thing, but that's when like she went, it shows the growth and development from always wearing pretty heels and being objectified to just wearing regular ass sneakers. A gigantic change, another change that I was not a fan of. Number two, Ren's death. Okay. Overall, the anime handled Ren pretty well. He's very similar to how he is in the web comic. I'm really happy they kept those weird scenes with him expelling all those fish and acting like a total psychopath. Like He was really creepy when all these different shit came out of his mouth, especially when arms started. Like he had a lot of tongues, but then when the arms came out of the mouth, it's like, ugh. Overall, they handled Ren very well. However, in the anime, when Curtin comes down with the hammer, which by the way is also slightly different, Ren, Straight up dies. He's yeah. squished. He got splat like a pancake, ketchup flavored. And he dies. He's like, I sent the bull. And then he dies, right? Yeah. In the webcomic, he says, I sent the bull. But guess what? This is just one of my bodies. So he turns to a knock and says, see you again, mutt. So that means that see you again will never happen. Another example where a character in the early game is set up to show up in the future, but the author didn't really have an idea and realized that later on that he never really matters. Therefore, yeah, just do whatever you want with Ren. It doesn't really matter. And he survives. Like, that was just one of his... He does actually show up? Well, if he does that, then they're going to skip that in the webtoon, right? Like, he's just dead. Either, like, I don't think it really matters, but, like, either they can have a different character to represent what Ren will do in the future, or he just... Maybe the death is fake and, you know, they didn't ex explain that, like, he had a... Like, like, they don't need to have this scene to make it seem like Ren didn't die. Yeah, he got splat. But maybe the anime just decided to skip this part and he'll be back later on in the future. Or it's gonna be a separate character to do what's gonna happen in the webtoon.
That's my guess. His fake bodies, he somehow has this ability to be... To, to, to have a fake body roaming around, right? It's really interesting. Uh, but in the anime, he just straight up dies. He, well, they never confirm it, right? He gets splat. And yes, it's looking like he's dead. But again, in anime, you really never know what's going to happen with the character until somebody... There's a direct confirmation from the narrator, different characters. Like, there needs to be absolute proof. And it looks like he's done, for sure. But then they could be like... Well, actually, he's not dead, and that was a fake body, and we never had to explain it, and psych, uh, gotcha. Straight up. I don't like this change, because it sort of implies that we'll never see him again. And it's cool, because us webcomic readers, we can't wait to see Ren again. Like, is he gonna show up and fight a knock again? Like, what's gonna happen? You know, it's so fascinating. Yeah. But the anime sort of gets rid of that possibility, unless they do something where he shows up and he's like, Oh, I wasn't dead the whole time, which... That's exactly what's, what I think is gonna happen. I don't know, it's kind of cheap if it's implied he's dead. You know, at least in the webcomic, he admits, hey, I'm still alive. So when he shows up again, it'll make sense. Um, this is something I'm not a big fan of either. And I think this is a monumental change. I mean, Ren was one of really? the main villains of season one. And killing him versus him not dying, to me, is a massive change. And finally, number one, the biggest change, in my opinion, that the it? anime made over the webcomic, Rachel? Bomb's Explosions. So what? Bomb has two explosions in the anime, at least that's what I'm calling them, where he basically summons the sun to Earth. Oh, yeah, 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 the golden Shinsu moment in Crown Game. I hear that was all anime original. Earth, there's no other way I can really explain it. But at the end of the Crown Game, when Bomb is protecting Rachel, he basically from inside unleashes this massive just amount of shinsu that completely stuns everybody and Hua cool. Ryun just gets wrapped up in it it's I love crazy that scene. and it makes people think that bomb is this crazy strong monster which he is he has a lot of potential but in the original what happens instead is that bomb without even like realizing it releases this quick flash of shinsu that cuts Hua Ryun in the eye that's it and later Ro later states it wasn't even that strong, but the way he used it. Yeah, because like you need to have a contract with an admin to use a Shinsu on that floor, but then he is Shinsu himself, right? I like the golden Shinsu moment. I thought that was like a huge, like cool pop-off moment, you know? And, and Black Mart settling him down. And that because like if you think about it, those are two separate scenes that's anime only, right? The golden explosion of Shinsu and then Black and then Bomb trying to almost kill Hwarion and then Black Mart showing up again, which is anime original, and then stopping him. That whole scene was so cool. One of my favorite scenes in Tower of God. And I'm glad that they did it that way. Even if there is no meaning behind it. Uh, the most important thing is, yeah, Bomb, you know, his control of Shinsu, it's, it's different. He's an irregular. He doesn't need a contact with admin. He's just different. And I prefer in the anime way then. Used it. He didn't even make a contract with the administrator yet. And he's already using Shinsu. Like, that's the impressive thing. And I like this because it's slowly building up how impressive Bomb is without Bomb literally summoning the sun. He literally summons the sun. This isn't the worst. Did he summon the sun? I'd have to go back again. I thought that golden Shinsu came out from his body and then extended to the rooftop. What do you guys think happened here? You think he's summoning a sun? My understanding of that scene was he was exploding and Golden Shinsu was coming outside his body and it just kind of formed this pillar up to the top. I thought it's just imagery, just Shinsu going up. The color <clears throat> denoting that he's different quality Shinsu because irregular is my interpretation. But it's the sun? It's, 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 he, he, he's just exaggerating that, that, that it's the sun, right? That's, there's no deeper meaning behind this right now, right? I, I think so. Summons the sun. This isn't the worst change in the world. I, I get why they did it. They want to show you that how powerful Bomb he is. is crazy. He's got potential, yeah. right? He's he's a he's a monster. He's a powerhouse. But what I like is that in the original, they build up to that. It's not just like he summons this crazy thing and. and hmm. Maybe I'm crazy, but I prefer Bomb having this huge pop off moment earlier on rather than him having a small nick of Shinsu. I don't know, maybe I'm just not appreciating the slow buildup like he did, he had when he read the webtoon. Like the anime, that's one of my fucking favorite scenes. And I'm sure if you ask any normie watching Tower of God as well, if you ask them, what is your favorite scene in Tower of God? I bet you the crown game, you know, the pop-off moment with Bomb is like their favorite moments, right? You know, rocks everybody's expectations. It's crazy, it's cool because 
he shows off what he can do without even realizing it for one and it's so quick it's so like boom but it's damn it, it still on. slices horgan in the eye and that still impresses everybody right i like that so much better um but also when he fights is that why Hwadian always has a mask on that hides the other eye the injury and the webtoon but in the anime did she also get injured like that? I'd have to go back and see. The bull at the end of episode 12, in the anime, he gets swallowed again. Just like in episode one, it's kind of like a callback. And then from within, he does sort of like another sun explosion. It might not be okay. the exact same thing, like rewatching it, but it, it does seem similar, right? It's like this gigantic explosion. Well, in the original, Bomb waits until the bull gets close and then fires a beam of Shinsu through his mouth. Which okay. to me, again, it, it doesn't show you that Bomb is this crazy powerful person. Uh, it shows you that he's smart. You know, he's putting strategy to the- The anime is making Bomb a little bit more powerful than the webtoon. Because the anime right now, during the moment of creation, right? We already know in the webtoon how strong Bomb is. So rather than waiting and, you know, doing that, let's just give the normies, the anime only, some little peek of how powerful this person is to get the audience engaged. While I can understand what this guy is saying in terms of building up that hype that he felt in reading the webtoon, I think the anime's direction is a much better optimized way in getting a new audience that has no idea, that are monkeys that have no attention span to understand how special Bomb is. To, the, to use, and he's still using what he's learned, utilizing what he's learned, and I like this a lot. You know, I, I think that this, this is much better. I don't know, I, I feel like they're, they're sort of overhyping Bomb in the anime. Yeah, they are, intentionally. To make people watch this show more because if they overhype him then the ratings would go down and people wouldn't care as much it's, it's just that simple they're they're oh they're just like portraying him as this insanely powerful person when in reality he has a long way to go to and if you did not make him pop off like that people would lose interest straight up like this guy is a tower of god loyalist he's a he's an absolute zealot of the show and i i can truly appreciate that Right? But you got to understand, this guy is like 0.0001% of the audience that will watch the show no matter what. The totally separate new audience coming in, a bunch of normies, they cannot appreciate that slow buildup. They need to be given that instant gratification. In, in order to keep those audience hyped up, again, everything at the end of the day is just numbers, right? You got to have pop-off moments. To be that, that crazy strong person. I don't know if that's really a controversial opinion, but those are my thoughts on Bomb's Shinsu explosions. I feel like if they cut back on it more, it would have been better. But overall, it's not like a bad change, I guess, but it definitely is a huge change. I mean, sure. it completely changes who Bomb is to anime watchers and to the characters in the anime who are watching Bomb do this, right? It's a massive change. And everyone, including myself, was stunned when it happened in the anime. I was like, what? What is this? I've never seen Bomb do this, right? And so that's why it's number one. I feel like it is the biggest. No, that's fair. Again, like you got to, it's his opinion coming as a perspective of a true Tower of God enjoyer from the webtoons, right? So I can totally understand why he'd have this opinion. This change that the anime made. That is all guys for my top 10 biggest okay. changes from the webcomic to the anime. If you enjoyed, please leave a like on this video. I'd really appreciate it. Y'all know what to do. Go to his channel. Like his video, sub to his channel if you like him. So if you want to suggest one yeah. video a month that I do... I think that we're going to check out this video as well later. The anime ruined Bomb X Endorsey is something that I want to hear about. But hey, Dr. Bonehead, it looks like we got another Tower of God, you know, theorist, you know, reviewer, um, huge guy that loves this show. The attention to details during this whole video was quite good, right? These are all things that like, some of the things I heard from Annie News, but there's a lot of other things that I also didn't know. And regarding like the crazy pop-off moments, like I, again, my explanation is like, if you want to entice a completely separate audience of normies, you know, to watch this show, then you need to give them a reason to watch this show. But if you kind of just go the webtoon route for the slow burn, not everyone's kind of built like that, right? They're all monkeys at the end of the day. So am I. But you know, if you want to tap into that huge audience, you got to do a little bit of fan service. And personally me, I enjoy the shit out of that.